Very good. All right. Welcome, everybody. So, uh, taking right along with this COVID-19, we got signs in the heavens, uh, all kinds of things happening. So, what are you guys working on as far as codes? Uh, I have one that the access term is Shavuot 5780. I think I showed you the access term last time, but I hadn't worked it yet. Right. So I can show you. I'm going to be talking about that with um, Diane and Zen Garcia, supposedly on the 21st. Um, they, they agreed to do a um, sit-down interview with me. We're going to do it in Zoom, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm going to I'm going to bring this up because, as many of you may realize, there there's some that were trying to keep the Omer or count the Omer and keep that calendar, uh, the Zadok or whatever. Um, what was that they were calling it? The Zadok calendar? Zadok and Enoch also. Yeah. So anyway, they counted all the way up to 50, but they didn't complete what was what's actually written in Leviticus. And confusion comes from the way it is in the English. And it's, uh, it's kind of, but it occurred to me just simply being exposed to agriculture and the growth cycle of grain. Summer wheat takes about 102 days, right? So at 50 days, you would have had grain still in the field, about half of its life cycle. It would not, it would be immature, right? You could not have shop, you could not have the harvest festival in the middle of the growth cycle, right? You would have, you would have only had to, uh, been able to have ripe grain at that time if it would have been winter wheat and not yeah. summer wheat. Yeah, you would have that because you'd already harvest that, right? But this that was in the field is still in the field, still in the field now. We're coming up to harvest time. Um, but I wanted to bring that point up with them in the meeting because they are on the same calendar that I'm on. Um, but I'm not sure um, if, if they're aware of that. And I think this is who is going to reconcile this point. It hangs up a lot of Messianics who are trying to keep this. And it did to me. It would throw the count off because I would miss this point. And by the time the end of the year came, came around, I was already off. Right. It's off a real count. important thing to learn. Yeah. So. If you I've don't get this point, your, uh, you'll, you'll find sharing. yourself off on the count. And uh, I say that with all humility, guys. I'm not trying to be different. Some people take it as being divisive and things like that when you bring up a point. Because it's so exciting to finally get in touch with the feast. And, and you're all the way to the point where you're counting the Omer. You're pretty committed to Messianic Hebrew roots, sacred name, or whatever you want to be classified as. That's You're pretty dedicated at that point. Um, but then to come to find out that you're only half right, it, it can get, um, you know, you can, you can. We're, 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 we're trying to set ourselves apart from the rest of the world. Yeah. And the agricultural calendar in, in, in scripture sets, mm -hmm. us all, sets ourselves apart from the rest of the world. That's what it does. So we want to get that right as much yeah. as possible. And it's like you said, it's hard when you get to the end of the year and you find out you have more days left. And yeah. Uh, or not what even am I doing wrong reason. here? I'm trying to set myself apart. But <laughs> Another variable of that is not observing new moon because it is a set apart day. It's a different day than, than uh, the other days. And there's a study out there that shows you the different days that there are mentioned in the Bible. New moon day is a set apart day. If you don't observe new moon day and if you just blow right on by in your account, that'll also throw you off because you're not, you're not waiting on Yahuwah. It's a, it's a meeting every month. It's a Moedim. It's a, you know, the, Two witnesses go to cite the crescent. Um, so to get that codis, Rosh Kodis, the head correct, and then start your, your count, then it, it all falls into place correctly. Um, and so that's going to be the discussion with Jen and Diane coming up. But uh, there may be a connection to Paula's table there. Yeah, and uh, maybe you'll see something here that yeah. I have not seen. Um, Jonathan, can you? Um, enable the screen I'm share. I'm so sorry. I'm oh. off. <laughs> yeah, that's aggravating. They should just give you an option of, of allowing that all the time. Yeah. You can, but like Chris said last time, you have to set it when you're not actually in the meeting. Oh, okay. okay. Like on your dashboard? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, so this is it. Um, this access term is... Um, is going uh, negative, so it's uh, Shavuot, 
um, 57.80. Now, I don't know if this yod could make it 10 more and make it 57.90, but there's really nothing here uh, specific to the year, even though I have put in a few words, but other than that, what's here, I haven't found anything specific to our current events, let me say. But one fascinating thing here is that um, I now have the Peshitta from Acts through Revelation awesome. in form. And so I was going to Acts to look up when um, they were in the upper room waiting um, and the room, waiting for the, the helper to come. So um, some of these words are in Aramaic Hebrew spelling. So but it's very interesting how they interwove, and um, I, I, it was just a, kind of a great find for me. So, so here we have a Shavuot 5780, which is the year 2020, and um, let's see where we begin here. So um, in this uh, Burgundy, you can see it's interspersed with other words, but basically the start, it was this Burgundy with the yellow in the pink. Children of That's, Israel. Yeah, sons of Israel, uh -huh. Benai, uh, Benai Israel. Okay, and then um, we have um, Shabbat is in the uh, powder blue. It's there twice, left to right. And then um, we in the medium blue coming this way, we have Elohim. Um, in this pink with the yellow, um, let me see what that starts with. Um, Ikra, Yod, Kuf, Resh, Aleph. So it's going left to right, Yod, Kuf, Resh, Aleph. That is, he shall call. And um, then we have in the red plain text is his name. Like, in other words, he's talking about um, uh, we shall call his name. Mm. And um, then in the yellow is, uh, let's see what we have. We have a word for heaven. And uh, let me see what word that was. It was the heavens, um, shem, Shemim. So it's like the heaven, Shemim. And it's there twice with this shin right here. In the gray, is I will pour out and talks about I will pour out my spirit and then so here's where the uh, this this gray is in the Aramaic it's um Aleph Shin Wa Dalit and then this um this orange going through Sons of Israel both times here and then once over here is um the word for uh, tongues like tongues of fire that uh, came on the disciples' heads or those that, that were gathered in the room. And so the fire, and this is in the Aramaic, is uh, Nura uh, Nunwa Resh Aleph. It's going left to right, and then it's going down this way here. Now, Jonathan, have you seen where, or Chris, where the Aramaic can be used right along with the Hebrew? Yeah. It, okay. It, there's, they're, they're connected because uh, it's one's a, um, an earlier Semitic. Okay. Um, there's a lot of root words that are actually in the, the yeah, right. Aramaic that you can draw out. They may have little characters here and there that are separating them, but if you work hard enough at, at comparing them, uh -huh. trying to get them to come up in the ISA, uh, uh -huh. and different, very di different combinations. Uh, a lot of times, I'll find them. Okay, yeah. good. And then this uh, deeper blue with the gray letters is uh, suddenly, and that's also in the Aramaic. Um, Shin, Lamed, Yod, Aleph. Uh, so there's the word suddenly. And then in the black is. Um, was I am, Aleph He Yod He. Uh, it's in that verse, I am that I am. So it's here three times. 
going across the excess term and then one more time going up like this. Now this, uh, I would like to read this text right here. This is in um, Exodus. Six nine. Six nine. Yeah. Um, go down a little bit here. I'll back up to eight, and I will bring you in onto the land. Well, let me back up to seven, and I will take you to be for a, to me for a people, and I will be to you an Elohim, and you shall know that I am. Yehoah, your Elohim, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you in, in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And I will give it you for a heritage. I am Yehoah. And Moses spake so unto the children of Israel, but they hearkened not unto Moses for anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage. And then that's when um, Yahuwah said he was going to make a way uh, to let the people go. Right. Um, this word I found right here, this mem, uh, ta, I was just looking up words that uh, could be, and it, this means poverty, found that in the climbs. Mm -hmm. Which is a form um, of bondage, guys. Um, I'm sure you're aware uh this is a prevalent thing in the United States, one of the r supposed richest countries in the world, California being a supposed rich state, and there's 70,000 people on the streets in the just Los Angeles alone. So it's poverty is a form of bondage. Mm -hmm. And then this one right here, over here, uh, I marked them in white where I wanted to read. Uh, let's see. Twenty-five, twenty-two, and there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony, of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. So then he goes on to tell the directions on how to make um, the altar. And That's really down. interesting yeah. that the Shavuot with the year appears this way. Yeah. I, I thought for sure something current would come. And I didn't put too many things in. But I put in like COVID or Trump just to see if something from these right. days would show up. And I'm sure there's something else I haven't thought of right. to put in there. Um, You've got enough of here. a margin and enough. I mean, you could do a row skip on that and probably render more. Oh, true. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to try that. So three, two. Let's see where we are. Where am I? Let me do it. Um, and he shall lay his hand upon the head of his offering and kill it at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and Aaron's sons the priest shall sprinkle the blood on the altar round about and he shall offer of the sacrifice of the peace offering an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah the fat that covereth the inwards and all the fat that is upon the inwards and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver with the kidneys, which it shall he it shall he take away. Um, so you you kind of see what's all going on here. There's one more I wanted to read. It's down here. So this is in Deuteronomy 11. And 
showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahuwah by Elohim in vain, for Yahuwah will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it. Yahuwah thy Elohim hath commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahuwah thy Elohim. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy ox, nor thy ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. So I think it's, it's, a, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful picture of those who were waiting um, on Shavuot to receive from the Father his spirit um, as a helper. And it's those keeping the commands and, and waiting. And I think that's where we are right now. We are waiting. Amen. Yeah, and there are people who are uh, pre-gathering, so to speak. I wouldn't say there's a greater exodus going on, but definitely people are leaving big cities and, and getting out into um, mm -hmm. the wilderness, homesteading, um, being self-sufficient, those kinds of things, and just kind of waiting for him. Yeah. Yes. Observing the signs, there's... Um, supposedly, we're able to see this comet now in the evening, um, which will rise higher and higher with each night. Um, it's a sign. Chris, are you working on anything or want to share anything? Yeah, I'm actually looking. Oh, my goodness. You're going to just fall over when you see what I got. <laughs> that was a very good presentation. Uh, Sister Paula, I'm looking forward to Shabbat. Um, okay, I started this just this week. What you're looking at is actually Ezekiel 37, 38, 39. This is 37, 38, 39, 39 is down here. Um, the access term over here is actually the word ho the Hopi right here. Um, it's really small, but there's some anomalies in here that I think that are even more relevant than the access term itself. <laughs> right in here, I'm going to get to the punchline right away. Right in the middle of Ezekiel 38, verses 16 to 19. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. By the way, this is Ezekiel 38. It's the Gog war in a revelation uh, as a cloud to cover the land it shall be in the latter days and I will bring thee against my land that the heathen may know me when I shall be sanctified in thee O God before their eyes thus saith Yahuwah Elohim art thou he of whom I have spoken in old times by my servants the prophets and right here by the servants my prophets of Israel that's in the red right here, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them. And it shall come to pass at that same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith Yahuwah Elohim, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken, and surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. So that the fish of the sea, the fowls of the heaven, the beasts of the field, and all creeping things that creep upon the earth, all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence, and the mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith Yahuwah Elohim. Every man's sword shall be against his brother, and I will plead. Uh, again, against him with pestilence and with blood. That's a reference to Deuteronomy chapter 28, by the way. And I will reign upon him, upon his bands, and upon many people that are within him. An overflowing rain and a great hail and a fire and a brimstone. Mm. 
Okay, verse 20, you're looking at the sixth seal. Verse 22, you're looking at the first trumpet. And in between verse 20 and verse 22, you will see the word Hopi. Hey, hey, wav, pay, yod. Hopi. And if you keep going off the screen, wrap it around, it, start, it ends up here in the word prophecy. And covering the word prophecy is the word harbinger. You have oat here three times, oat, the oat, the oat, or uh, actually twice, the oat, the oat. And then right here you have Nibiru. Uh, now, Brother Scott and I have made a huge connection between Revelation chapter 8, the Sensors that's being thrown from the throne and a the word comet is actually encoded in there. I don't have it there, but uh, that's also a part of the revelation. I just need to mention that because that's a part of Re uh, Revelation 8 in the first trumpet. Uh, that also, too, is a part of the, the hail, the fire, the brimstone that comes with it. Um, that all is a sign for Nibiru that's coming. And you have Nibiru right there and the word harbinger and prophecy. Now this is really interesting. You have the word, the Hopi, coded right over top of the fly, flyer of the heavens, right here. Ayan, yo, wav, pe, he, shin, mem, yo, mem. The flyers, that's in verse, uh, it's right here actually. 20. the fowls of the heavens so the fish of the sea and the fowls of the heavens the beasts of the field and all the creeping things that creep upon the earth all the men that are upon the excuse me <laughs> are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and you've got the word hopi the hopi sign and the flyer of the heavens there now this is really interesting because you have this all taking place within a very specific uh, area in scripture. The, the page width is only 98. So this backs up actually into Ezekiel 37. And that's talking about the two sticks being brought together. The stick of Judah and the stick of Joseph being brought together. That is huge. We're literally sitting on the edge of that being fulfilled. Um, and you have the word... Uh, to for uh, for the house of Israel here in the U.S. here and from the natives, <laughs> and the word from the natives is sitting on top of his sukkah. You have Joseph coded in here. You also have in the U.S.A. here, and this here is saying uh, the people gather from the Gentiles right there. His sukkah. Uh, you have the word from the covenant here three times. Uh, mem, bet, resh, yo, tet. From the covenant, from the covenant, and from the covenant. Yeah, from the throne here, or the mercy seat. Uh, I had more, but the same thing happened to me. Uh, my, my computer shut off in the middle of my... No. Um, but and you, you have USA across where it's Kopi is in the, the files of the heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Click on that. And, yeah. That, and that's yeah, right by the way, here. you know, with the blue Kachina thing, that's what that sign is to them is a bird. It's a bird. Yeah. A flyer of heaven, of the heavens. It's a blue bird, blue, white type of bird. Yeah. Um, I don't know what this means yet. I'm still trying to figure this out, but you have the word uh, Zolfin over top of the Hopi. Hidden. Hidden. It can also mean north. Or north. Yeah, that's actually is the word north. Yeah. Uh, 39. Oh, this is. So this is this is what's so interesting is because the Gog War is a Nephilim war as well. And you have the Hopis involved with that because the North American natives have been influenced by the Nephilim. So it's, I believe it's no coincidence they are seeing all this stuff about the Hopi prophecy, the, the bird of the heavens, the, the sign of Nibiru. It's yeah. all there. 
and, and you have this verse here, which is actually uh, coincides with Joel 2.20. And I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee, and I will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and I will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. Um, he's saying that after this first wave of attack from Ezekiel 38, the previous chapter, he's going to defeat them, but spare one-sixth of that army, and that army will be the one that comes back in Joel 3.2 and here in Ezekiel 9, but they'll also come back with the king. Uh, the kings of the north will king back, come back with the, the king of the east, and that will be the second half of the God War. Uh, so that's, that's interesting that that's right there along that line. I should have marked it out, but you have, you have North America, which in the, in the past, in our history, has had a large influence of, of the Nephilim. Well, absolutely. I mean, from Canada all the way down to South America, you've got, you've got um, pyramids, you've got mounds, uh, especially down in like, you know, Mississippi, Louisiana, you know, serpent mounds, you got um, some, you know, some you know, ruins that are in like the Midwest. Um, you even got Yahuwah's name in Hebrew. You've got a, I know they found an ancient menorah. They've also right. found yeah. the Ten Commandments. Uh -huh. um, and these are ancient artifacts. So um, even before Columbus, Yahuwah's people or a connection to Yahuwah's people were over here. Now, Nephilim influence? Absolutely. Think about that. You're talking about people out in, in they're lifting all these boulders with precision milled, you know, edges and stuff. No, there had to be something going on. And we see that across many cultures, guys, Egyptians, same thing. Um, so the reason why this kind of thing is relevant and looking for it in the codes, it, now this admittedly, this is kind of an advanced search because we're, we're kind of, this has got a, a touch of Velikovsky who, uh, suggested that we should look cross cultures for right. different perspectives because uh, th these people, this ancient people, obviously witnessed things in the stars and they recorded it. They they began to have their own legends. <clears throat> we we have seen with the Hawaiian people, the ancient Hawaiian people before um, the Christians got here. They had a biblical account. It was just they called the people different names. There was a patriarch with twelve sons and. Uh, there was a Moses figure. There was an Exodus. There was even an Adam and Eve. So it was the same exact story. Um, they just had it in their different language and told it differently. This is how and you. Of course, get when you start when you start translating languages, some you know that some of the information is going to get lost in the translation. Right, and also legend gets the woven natives, in yeah. myths. Um, you like the Epic of Gilgamesh. You have all of these. Uh, flood accounts across many cultures and they tell it in their own way. Uh, this is why I like the Colburn because it gives us a perspective from an ancient people who experience what is potentially going to be coming again, guys, because these things are cyclic. There's, well, there's cycles this, involved. This is just it. I'm not seeing the God war here that you see coming against Israel as a localized event. I'm seeing this worldwide. This is a worldwide event. And, and you throw in the mix there uh, the tabernacle that they, they plan on building in, in Arizona and it makes even more sense, <laughs> which is off the chart bizarro, but it been, makes more sense. Just last week we were talking, we saw verses talking about who, you know, where's his tabernacle? It's been neglected. Who's, who's, who's going to erect his tabernacle, right? right? Uh, with a connection with Peter there. Um, which wow, is pretty interesting. Anyway, um, yeah, fascinating stuff, guys. But here, here yeah. we are on on in North America, uh, in USA, and you're seeing uh, some very deep historical and ancient connections to to the God War and and also to to the remnant of Israel, the residue. Right. So, so these terms um, are like markers, just like N the word Nibiru is. Nibiru is a secular term. Uh, it does not originate from stitchens. Uh, it, it can even be found in the Ethiopic. So, uh, but the fact that we can see it in relation to wormwood 
it, it's a marker. It tells us we're, th these things are related. Uh, so uh, the Hopi people have witnessed things in the stars. They have their own names to it. And as you can see, there's a connection there. Uh, and they weren't the only ones. I mean, this, these typical, these things are typically seen by the, by the world, right? The Chinese are, they've got recordings going way back of um, celestial events. Um, you know, you guys are familiar with Gil Broussard. He, he, he has a touch of Velikovsky in his studies where he's looking across the cultures and making comparisons, looking at patterns, um, the different way people describe things, the very same things happening. Um, so, yeah. So I think, I think what the most profound in here is this passage about putting the two sticks together and reforming the, the tribes of Jacob and Joseph, Joseph and Joseph and Judah put their two sticks together. And it seems like the Native Americans are, are, are there with that. I'd, ha I'd have to do more searching on that, but that, that's what the Holy Spirit is. Well, in Mila Hagoin, in the fullness of the nations, yeah. when this begins, this, this is complete. And so I, I think you, there is a connection because um, he's going to reconcile um, everybody Right, they're, they're, the, the Native Americans are going to rededicate themselves to the covenant, and and they're going to be accepted by our Father. I think that's what I'm seeing. And, and right, there's a lot of believers um, that are Native Americans, and um, of course we've been talking about Riverwind. Um, that's actually actually I should have looked for Joseph because Joseph is right here. Yo, Bob, Shin, Pei. I bet you I could find Joseph with Riverwind in here. Um, what table is that working on now? This is that one. This one here. Yeah, I found, I found Joseph. Actually, Father Yahoo is showing me Joseph. This access term is, uh, Lakota witness. Lamed Kuth Wav Tet Hey. Uh, I and Dalit Yod, Lakota Witness, actually comes up twice. There's another table. But up here you have Yosef, Yod, Wav, Samak, Pei. But at the same ELSs, uh, you'll find River, Nun, He, Resh, and Resh, Wav, Het. They're both at the same ELS of 13 along the same line. So you have Joseph, uh, river and wind here, and you have something here before the tabernacle, uh, Lama, Mem, Shin, Kaf, Nun. That's why I'm, why I'm saying there's going to be a restoration. Uh, over here, this is interesting. You have the word Kachina, Kaf, Het, Yod, Nun, He, and it's attached to in or the, the USA here, and you got round, round about the children of Israel. But you also have the word red tucked in there, and you also have the word red up here, and you have Yahusha, yod Hey wav shen Ayan. and uh, you have the appearance of mam resh alaf Hey and the word Kachina, again here, the appearance of the Kachina in the heavens right there. So it kind of fits uh, for yeah for Yahua. Uh, get this, Peter Pei Tet Resh is on the same line as Kaf Resh Yod Sonic. <laughs> Peter and Chris, right there, and you have the word. He Shin Lamed Yod Het here, the one sent uh, and Lakota witness. So I know my brother Peter and I we've been sent to to witness to the North American natives, and I, I believe Lakota the Lakota are going to play a key role. Look at this; you got the word Hopi attached right to the axis term. 
A He Wav Pe Yod uh, to the land Lamed Aleph Resh Zadi La uh, La Rez La Retz, uh, and you have the covenant. Uh, hey, hey, bet, resh, yo, tal, the covenant to the land and the word Hopi right here, all along one line, which I find that interesting. And again, you'll have USA up here. I don't have it marked right. <laughs> uh, hey, Aleph, resh, or babe, babe. Is that it? But you have the word covenant in there. Hey, bet, ratio, tal, or covenant, Yehusha. Uh, the angel, actually, that's interesting. The word the angel of Yahuwah and the word kachini are connected. <laughs> um, that's one table. You have the word native, native, the codes of the native. They're seeing our codes. You have Ephraim in here as well. Uh, hold on a second. Fix that a bit. Ephraim. Ephraim. Aleph. Pe Resh Yod Mem Ephraim. Uh, you got the word Canadian uh, or Canada. Kuf Nun Dalat He Ephraim Canada, and then prophecy here for the uh, the the remnant of Judah, and then you have Chris up here with from Ephraim. Um, but the codes, the codes are going to play a, a pivotal role in bringing the Native Americans back into the covenant with Yahuwah. That's what this is. I, was, I nearly fell over when I see this. The words, e, the codes of Ephraim and the natives. Um, the word flyer as the flyer here. Um, Oh, here you have backwards his prophet. Um, what other code that I have? It's Lakota witness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He see. There's two tables. The one that I showed you. Uh, had a row skip of three and at a, or two at 144,474. There's four fours in the uh, axe in the in the page width. This one here is at a ELS of uh, 40,774. I do believe I put a row skip in there. Um, I'm I've been working on something else, so this is actually foreign to me now. <laughs> uh, but this line here is Chronicles. Priest did blow the show, show, did blow the trumpet before the ark of Yahuwah. Um, I have to look at this again. But there's there are there are actually two tables to this. The one I just showed you in this one is. Uh, uh, I've been thinking about other things so. Three. Oh, yeah, Tur turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out, out my spirit unto you, and I will make you make known my words unto you, actually. I'm gonna back up a bit to get the gist of it. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity and the scorners delight in your scorning and fools hate knowledge? Turn you you at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called, and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded, but 
ye have set a knot all my counsel, and would would none of my refute repute repro reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity, I will mock when you fear come so there's gonna be you you know that there's gonna be some of the North American natives that not, are not gonna go well along with this, okay, being uh, restored back to the tribes of Israel. So there's a, a slight rebuke going on in there about that. But that's interesting. How long will you, how long, will, how long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? I mean, you look at the North American natives, they live a very simple life. Uh, they're, they're complicated. They have a very rich culture, uh, but compared to our Babylonian life, it's quite simple. <laughs> um, so I don't want to get into that anymore. That, but <clears throat> but there's plenty. I got I got another access term. Uh, Native Americans is also there in two tables. Um, it's, it's so it's it's encoded twice. Yeah. So, yeah, so if you look at the word uh, native, yo, lama, yo, dalit, and in America, you come up with two tables. And, and the same thing with uh, Lakota witness, you come up with two tables. That's funny. If you search blue kachina, you'll come up with two tables. Yeah, you'll come <laughs> up with two tables, yeah. There's been, um, um, well, there's been a couple of different colors recorded with this um, comet. Um, orange, but also blue is part of the ionizing um, trail. And Paul has, Paul has said in the chat, it was in the Big Dipper a week ago. So what would that mean? If um, you had a harbinger of, you know, let's say war or destruction or judgment in the Big Dipper, what would, what would that mean? Signal, you know, what would that represent? What do you do with a big dipper? You pour out, right? You pour out. Interesting. Hmm. It'd be interesting to see the, the complete course of um, from where, where it was visible and where it's no longer visible in the Maseroth. Mm. So you guys, I did find um, my servant Riverwind encoded, and so I had I had a little bit of time to work on that this week. Really, really interesting. My servant Riverwind with Joseph <clears throat> going across there. Um, Brother Scott has actually talked to him on the phone. And he, he was able to talk to his wife. So I don't I don't want to take nothing away from Brother Scott, but he has a testimony in this. I hopefully he'll be able to share it. Yeah, Sunday uh, at some point in time. Hopefully. Um, in in the purple there is Chief. Um, his wife's name is there, Laura Lynn, right there. And then here here's something really interesting. You got you got River and Wind come together with House of Israel, right? Mm. And then. Um, Watchman of Ephraim, Nibiru is just right above that, right? With um, the destroyer sitting on that, um, that bar. Um, interesting anomaly with Yahuwah's name, uh, kind of does like a Z, right? Yahuwah, Yahuwah, Yahuwah. The house of Yahuwah. Yeah, it is. That one is about his house. Uh, America. Full spelling is right there, and uh, and then of course the word Kachina was was vertical. This is with the connection with the mirror, so it is a astronomical event. That's um, all goes back to Wormwood, what the Bible calls Wormwood. He also had his wife's name here with Chief. So that's as far as I got on it. Um, but what's really interesting is um, what crosses over his name right there. Uh, now I don't I don't know if he has a connection to the 
the Lakota. Um, this could just be a really cool coincidence, or it could be something. But right he's, there. He's actually from the Lakota tribe, I do believe. So in Ezra, which is part of restoration, by the way, we see listings of children of, of tribes, many tribes. But the one right there that's highlighted is um, quite interesting because it's, it's, just, it's a variation, I think, of yeah. Lakota. Yeah, it's, it's like what I was finding with, finding with Hopi. I found Hopi Eam as, as some part, part of the tribes, and here you're seeing something very similar phonetic to yeah. Lakota, but Nakota. It's Nakota. Nakota. Wow, so, so that's really awesome. Drop that in and put a, a llama and you got luck. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. See, that, that, that is awesome how the Bible codes will key into these phonetic things. Yeah, so, so look, it's, it's listing all these tribes. It's basically we have a tribe in Alberta that is called the Nicoda. Yeah, Nicoda. Nicoda, yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, the word oat that's vertical there. But yeah, that, I didn't really get a lot uh, real far on this. I'm still trying to reconstruct this. This was one of them that that I <laughs> a lot of stuff on. Um, but I, I did message him and tell and told him I found um, I found something really interesting with uh, with connection to his name. Uh, that happens to be Jeremiah up here. Um, and this was Ezra, by the way. But but up here in Jeremiah 17:17. 17, 17, um, for some reason I got that highlighted. Yeah. Be not a terror unto me, thou art my hope in the day of evil. Yeah. So, uh, that's the two I got in front of me. Um, I haven't, I haven't brought up the other ones that I was working on. Marty, you working on anything? Yeah, I have a couple interesting tables that you will appreciate more now that Chris showed what he showed. I always, I always, that's, I don't know whether he, you know, who always, you know, it's not often that he has us work on the same thing, but sometimes we do. Uh, so let me share it. My my heart really goes out to the North American natives actually natives all out over the world because they've they've really suffered and and if there's anything i can do to try and make things better i'm going to do it and, and i know there's others in here that feel the same way they're like they're definitely the, yeah. the bottom of the totem pole not to use like a pun or anything but but literally the bottom of the totem pole but here's the thing the the scriptures say the last will be first in the, in the first exactly place. yes they, you know it's <laughs> There's going to be a, a reconciliation of all nations. Um, and the only ones that will be cursed is the ones that don't honor him, guys. And he's, he's, he asked just to honor the feast, honor his name, right? So if they don't come and honor the feast and, and tabernacle with him, then, then their, their nations will suffer. But um, interesting. You know, Here's the reality of it. They're, they are our brothers and sisters. <laughs> all of so, humanity, right? Right. So Leviticus, all in Leviticus, you got a Torah code. Yeah, so I've shown this before. This is the Ring of Fire <clears throat> table that I covered um, maybe two classes ago. Um, and I had a bunch of related tables that had, you know, this, this was part of the thing with the pictures of all the different months this year yeah. that, um, that uh, Molly and I had both seen and thought was a joke. And then realized it was going right according to the pictures. So this, this ring of fire table was in that same data set. So after, I don't know, the last, either the, probably the live stream, um, when you were talking about uh, Velikovsky, <laughs> I put Kachina in here and there it is. <laughs> yeah. So it's right there um, in this table which then led me to realize that <clears throat> the whole data set's related. 
to that event. So then I started inverting it and triangulating it. Um, and I thought about the fact that the Kachin is a harbinger, so I put harbinger in there. And got this interesting table. So, um, wow. that's, that's pretty cool. I don't think I've ever seen something. I haven't that, either. That's amazing. Yeah. So it's, it's a really interesting table in that all of the stuff is horizontal intersecting the access term. You know, I, I thought of Kakub, but when I put Comet into, um, Google translate, I got this. So is this like falling star or flying, you know, if, um, that must translate to something. That's comet, not comet star. Comet star. Comet star is what they gave. Or com it. yeah, uh, the the kakab. Yeah, at that star. Some point in times could also mean planet. Right. Yeah. It means yeah. moving. It means moving planet. Moving. Moving star. planet. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we have some interesting things because um, uh, we have the year 2022, which also includes, of course, 2020 in it um with a famine right there uh and this is uh where is famine that's the nehemiah um so i haven't gone and looked at all that scripture i did go look at exodus here but it might be interesting to go look at that but as we're to speaking, me i just realized this as we're speaking guys because the son of where it is right now i'm realizing that the, technically the 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 comet is directly over me and probably still over the mainland. We just can't see it because it's veiled in the sun. But as soon as it goes down below the horizon, wherever you yeah. are, you yeah. will see it in a constellation somewhere. So yeah. I think we should follow up with it because um, it, it, um, tracking it where you can see it first and where you cannot see it and its relation to the Maseroths will will be the communication, so to speak, from the most. Uh, the Big Dipper is also one of the constellations that they were worshiping as well. It's it's actually mentioned in Job 38 or Job 9 or something. Yeah, and it's to the up. north, by the way. Yeah. To the north. So. so what's interesting about this is that you have, right, the moving planet, the comet, connected to Harbinger. <laughs> and all the other, you know, stuff is... Quakes, earthquakes, earthquakes, COVID, USA. <laughs> I mean, that just that just confirms what I showed in Ezekiel thirty-eight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and we have eclipse. So uh, this is in that same data set as the Ring of Fire eclipse. So um, these are, to me, they're all harbingers of of um, what's happening now and through sort of the next year and a half. Um, so then I started saying. All right, well, what, you know, if I start looking for what it's a harbinger of, um, it definitely appears to be earthquakes. So this is the access term blue kachina. It connects to star. Um, and then we have the year, right? Pei, Ta, Shin, Pei, Aleph. We have USA connected to it. We have famine running through there. Corona Harbinger. Yeah. You have the word from Zothan there, from, from the hidden right next to the word star is. Mm -hmm. At the top, you have Kakab, and yeah. then the same line where the bed is. Yeah. Uh, go down where the bed in Kakab is. Oh, in Kakab, uh, here. Yeah. yeah, now move to the right. E Your first darker let letter set, Mems Zadi Pei Yod Noon. That's the word from the hidden. Mems Zadi Pei Yod Noon. Yeah, that's okay. from the hidden. Hmm. So, yeah, so veiled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey, Marty. Yeah. Um, where it says from the quake and both of these right here and then in the last table you had where it had all the horizontal terms yeah yeah you remember the yellowstone i'm not changing the subject but the yellowstone no, i'm not it it you had it said on those from the quake almost every single yeah table. this this is in the same data set we're getting there keep that in the back of your mind <laughs> okay sorry I didn't mean to jump. no worries 
So, uh, and this is as you, so that data set actually originated because I started working um, the term that Chris had in a table a while back called in New Madrid. And so um, the covenant and in Jubilee and those sorts of terms were in his data set. And so I developed this data set by starting off with a few of his terms and then um, triangulating it to the pictures that were in that card that Molly and I saw. So this has turned into a really interesting data set because as I keep throwing more terms against it, it keeps revealing, revealing more things. So, so as we keep going down the access term, we have COVID in here, we've got Eclipse, we have the Covenant and, and then Quake. Um, this is a really interesting mix of scripture. I, I really have to dive into this because there's a lot of scripture in here, um, and I didn't really get a, a chance. Um, I did look at, so in the previous table, um, this harbinger is in Exodus 17, 14. And Exodus 17. So this is when they're all going out into the desert and everybody's complaining, right? So uh birth pains you know whatever um stop it that's mine yeah all right somebody needs to go on mute um so where where um where this term harbinger is is it says and you who has said to moshe write this for a remembrance in the book and recite it in the hearing of Yehoshua, that I shall completely blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under the heavens. Yeah, Amal Amalek, that's reference to the Amims, who are yeah. also the Nephilim spirits. So that, I thought that was pretty interesting that that was in here. Yeah, yeah. Connected to the, to this um, comet in the Blue Kachina data set. So then with Blue Kachina, um, you know, I started looking through here, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I literally, these tables I'm showing you, I literally started a few, few hours ago. So I, I see something in there right, right at the very top of the access term. Yeah. Uh, you got a green calf and a red towel right above the red towel. You have a wav traveling to the left. You have Ann Joseph right there. Where is the red town? Uh, right there, right there. Uh, oh, here, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right there, right above, you have the Wav, and then yeah. to the left, Yod, Wav. Oh, yeah, there you go. You have Anne Joseph Anne right Joseph. there. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a big connection between the blue Kachina and the, the, the word Joseph. I'll just say yeah. the word Joseph, <laughs> okay. Who knows? You might have Joseph Riverwind in here somewhere. I didn't. I didn't put probably it in to Could search. Um, so then um, I've, like I said, I just literally started this, you know, a few hours ago. So I haven't been able to get all told the scripture. So I'm going to keep looking through the scripture, and we'll probably revisit this um, the next time around. I don't know if we're gonna. Are you going to do the live stream on Sunday? Isn't Sunday the feast? It's the nineteenth, yeah. right? Yeah. Is it it's their Shabbat, and yeah, it's it's the feast. All right, so uh, I just want to show you the next table in the series of the triangulation is Yellowstone, but I haven't had any time to decode it. <laughs> so it's in there. It's got Kachina in it. It's all of that. So that's you'll that's stay tuned. <laughs> So that was a good catch. Uh, um, I, I think we'll probably still do a um, a broadcast, but maybe change up the format a little bit and talk about Shabbat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, also codes. But but uh, we'll make sure we talk about it because it, it's expected. This is this is a day where the Holy Spirit was poured out, so um, it may happen again in our time. So uh, very good. Time it comes around, we want to observe. Yeah. Might, might have a really good one that day. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs>
And I was even thinking of going back to my um, access term and doing a different, you know, width. Right. Um, put, see what I go skip on there. Yeah, uh -huh. that's a good idea. Yeah. Wow. Who knows? Joseph Riverman might even be watching. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> By then. I think you was definitely using him. Um, uh, he's got a ministry. He's, he's uh, very busy. I, I hear Scott tells me he's very busy. So mm -hmm. um, he's got a connection to, um, uh, he did a, a music thing with um, Jos uh, Joshua Aaron in Israel. Interesting guy. I am friends with him on Facebook. Um, any more codes? I don't know. That was it for me. I got a ton of them, but I don't know what to show. <laughs> Looking at as something. Same lines. Well, I just wanted to talk about that calendar that Marty mentioned. Um, July, there calls for a solar flare. And yesterday, they had a 7.3 in Papua New Guinea that was caused by a solar flare. Um, August, it calls for Yellowstone to erupt. And September, 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 and this I think ties in with the, um, the Hopi, is the alien invasion and the return of the Nephilim. And I think that the two are gonna have to tie in together somehow. So we don't have a timeline based on the, what the codes are showing, but based on that calendar, it's solar flare, Yellowstone eruption, alien invasion, and then we go back to pandemic October and November, and then an asteroid in December. Um, I don't think that the pandemic's going to matter much after the alien slash Nephilim invasion, but we'll see. Yeah, I have. I started working on the alien invasion stuff. I, uh, I've just been I've been plowing through so many codes. I just I I even forgot I was working on it. <laughs> you gotta go back and find the tables. I'm canning. That's that's all I, I'm canning. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Let me go and try to see if we can see the comment this evening. Uh, it's been cloudy. It depends, it the past, depends uh, where you're looking at it from. I'm I'm trying to look up where you can see it on the East Coast, but there. I think yesterday. Oh, here it is. <laughs> got it. Sorry, still have my mic open. Mm. Did you guys see it, Paula? Um, I went out and looked for it. Um, they said about 80 minutes after dark. And um, I saw the Big Dipper, but I did not see it. So I'm thinking if um, either it was, you know, it's going to rise in the sky um, for us. So I'm thinking maybe tonight it might be a little <laughs> higher. Um, yeah, it'll be higher some, each night. Yeah, and then some days it changes and it's in the morning. But I think that might have been a couple of days ago. You could have seen it morning and night, like for one day. But uh, I don't quite have it down yet, but it's right out, the Big Dipper is right out our front um, window. So I can go in my front yard and look up and I kind of did it for an hour last night, but that's probably not long enough. Most nights for us here, we, we get a, um, a shower in, uh, after sundown. Or even before, and it'll last through sundown, so it'll be clouds where we can't see. But not all nights. Um, it just has been a trend lately. So we may have to go up to what's called Saddle Road, which is the road that goes over in between um, Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa, and uh, get above the clouds. I was camping this week and I saw it clear as a bell two nights ago, three nights ago. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. Did it have any code? Um, not really. It was, 
kind of like a bluish reddish on the outline of it the outside but um it had more like well more of a white tail wow yeah 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 i saw it on wednesday just like you did leah yeah yeah it was amazing because it's yeah. just like it looks like it's kind of going in slow motion and mm -hmm. you know you expect it to kind of go yeah, fast That's it was really just nice. under the big dipper it, yeah it was just under the big dipper and it was going really slow and I saw it between 11 and 12 at night here in North Carolina. Yeah, and I have it, binoculars and there was... Is, is this comet, is it sun diving now or is it past that? Is no, it's it, already past it. It's already past? Okay. So 11 or 12 at night. Okay, well that makes a difference for me. <laughs> I was looking too early. Let's see if... Um, there's any current somebody's doing a lob stream on it right now there's a lot of info on it yeah you, you know another thing's really interesting about this thing it's not like Haley's comet you won't see this again for almost seven it's 6800 years so uh well, we better pretty, see it now right <laughs> you're right yeah <laughs> Interesting. I just found the data set. I'm working, Molly. I'm working on a <clears throat> set of tables called Spaceship Deception. So, but I set those aside to work on the Blue Scuchinas. Ha! Ah. <laughs> I'll get I, back. To, I'll get back to that. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, uh, canning, canning <laughs> building. That's what I'm doing. There was also a quake here in North Carolina, near the mountains. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. 2.0 on the Richter. Oh, I'll have to look that up. Can't even feel that. Yeah, that's a, um, if you're asleep, you might miss it. I think it has to be above four for you to even feel it. Depends on how deep it is. You want me to share my screen? I got this comet on live. Yeah, sure. Darla's able to feel feel the ones I can't feel. Um, yeah, and it does have like a little a blue kind of tinge to it from that perspective. Uh, it's even got a countdown the closest to earth in 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 less than in one minute and 45 seconds yeah. then it's going bye 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 <laughs> so obviously they're copying us from somebody else's channel yeah Just to get some views. So they did the same thing with the uh, the volcano. People would rebroadcast. Okay, Here, here's the thing with the comet. You've got actually two tails. You got one of them that's that's actual material debris that's that's chemical. It's coming off of it. Uh, but then you have an electric electrical tail that is always opposite from the sun it's always going away from the sun because of the interaction because of the, the high energy plasma yeah. now when it when a comet uh when it approaches the sun and it starts to luminesce like this it becomes just a normal asteroid turns into a comet um the gamma rays and the x-rays start slamming against the front face of the comet and the the crystalline structure inside of it is actually what is giving it its tail uh the chemical tail the the gamma rays and the x-rays interact with the crystals causing a pe pezoetic reaction and it's 
the, the radiation and the crystals are actually creating hydrides. It's, cre it's creating water. They, it literally is a, a, is a tail made up of hydrides behind it. So the, the, there's an electrical chemical reaction going on and it's producing a water trail behind it. It's not a dirty snowball melting and losing its mass. This is all completely electrical. It, nothing has to do with water evaporating. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then of course you have the electrical part of it. If you look at a chunk of stone uh, after it, they, they can tell whether it's interacted with the sun or not. If it's just a, a chunk of rock, um, usually it hasn't interacted with our sun, but if it looks like a dumbbell, you got two round ends with a, a long, thin piece in between, you can tell that it's literally disintegrating itself. You're, you're looking at the positive and negative side of, of, of this comet, and it... And it uh, causes an electrical discharge between the two an anode and cathode that it makes and, and it literally eats the, the, the interior of the comet. That's actually what I believe would happen to Comet Ison, is that it, it passed that uh, plasma barrier, the pressure zone in between Mars and, and the Earth and uh, the stress was, was too great for us and it had already disintegrated too much it just fractured and it, it flew apart that that's a common thing for for uh, comets to yeah. happen is, is for the electricity to be so devastating and it just eats it like acid and finally it just flies apart so this whole notion that comets are dirty snowballs is just so you will not understand or figure it out that we're living in an electrical universe yeah Velikovsky thought that that yeah. it was not a dirty snowball, that it was electrically, that's what the universe was. And he wasn't even a scientist, and all of the science community laughed at him. Um, but it turns out he was right. <laughs> the, the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, now that they've look, looked at the data, they can see it's left the the physical solar system, but it hasn't left that electrical field that pre precedes a solar system as it's moving through the, the galaxy. There's actually, our sun is actually connected to the galaxy itself the way, the same way that our planets are connected to the sun with a high energy plasma that we can't see. The same with our sun is also connected to the interior of the galaxy as well. And, um, the 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 model that NASA had provided to explain what you would see once this Voyager spacecraft got outside of the solar system didn't it didn't add up. But they look at this in the in this electrical universe uh, theory, and it actually explains what they're seeing. So it they could actually compare this with the electrical universe theory and and come up with positive answers. Whereas the theory that NASA has come up with uh, falls, falls flat on its face. Yeah. Yeah. You know, with galactic lightning, um, you know, there's several scriptures talking about um, the, at the coming of Yahuwah, that um, lightning goes before him, thunderings and lightnings, that, mm -hmm. that mountains melt at his presence. And you think, wow, that's, that's, that's strong language. Right? Are we talking about, is this an analogy? Is this, is this some symbolic? Well, scientifically, um, the interaction of, a, of another planetary body coming into this solar system will cause galactic lightning, uh, very similar to what, or were exactly what happened with um, Siding Spring. Was it Siding Spring in uh, Mars? Yes, yes, Siding Spring. The plasma discharge that took place. The whole, the whole planet lit up like a light bulb, right? Um, the Marianas Trench was excavated um, by a plasma bolt, uh, like an arc welder on a steel plate. Uh, it's very plausible. The same thing happened in the Southwest, um, exactly where the Hopi Indian is, um, by the way, in the Navajo, in that region, where it looks like from the, the satellite photos, 
this is a, a, a place where the plasma discharge took place in North America. They actually excavated the, uh, all of the canyons, not just the Grand Canyon, all of the canyons. And, and that is an immense amount of power. This is the galactic lightning that melts mountains at his presence. No. <laughs> and that, that, that plasma interaction between the crystalline structure of the earth and the elements that were in between the plasma discharge and this crystalline structure is what actually caused all this gold and silver to form. Mm. I believe that that's what was decorating the mountains. Uh, Something else that happened. Years ago, when the white man came and took it all, but that's what they seen. The mountains were literally decorated with gold and silver and precious stones because of the plasma interaction with the with the elements. And that is the only thing that can actually form a, a diamond, by the way, is plasma, heat, and pressure. You know, at the moment of that type of energy discharge, where we're ex the excavation of billions of cubic feet of matter is being ejected upwards and out into the stratosphere and even into space, much of it falls back down as fiery brimstone. Um, this, this, I watched a documentary about Sodom and Gomorrah and it was a theory that an asteroid strike several hundred miles away actually ejected the material into, sp into space and it fell back down onto the, these two cities as fiery stones. Um, and so ah, I could see that. I could see how this could be a thing. Um, yeah, um, immense power. I mean, we, we could not imagine that kind of a power. Um, the reverberation, like say you were on the other side of the planet, you would, you would know when this would, was happening because from, from a, a disconnected perspective from in outer space, so to speak, the whole planet is being illuminated by this electrical charge like a light bulb and so there is reverberation there's there's vibration there's sound traveling around inside of this whatever you want to call it a dome uh it's reverberating it's it is very apparent to everyone involved something is happening now some it's, if you were within a thousand miles or even further of this hit you were vaporized unless you were concealed by mountains or something that is concealing you that could hide you from that amount of pressure and um, heat and sear the sound wave alone is enough to rip your body up just into shreds right that's an immense discharge of electrical power in a, a particular place melting mountains that, that's a lot of power <laughs> so um but but on the other side of the world your perspective would be uh, I, I don't know. You may be seeing something in the heavens. You may be hearing something, um, and it's going to be recorded in your history. And that's that's why it's important to look at at the different cultures. And again, I bring up Golfkowski. He gives us the model. Uh, he says, "Hey, look at what other people are saying." Right? Basically, the Chinese, the Arabs, um, they'll have it recorded in with their wise men. Um, the, the ones looking at the stars, the one following signs and have prophecies. They develop legends and, and things like that. Um, many times their, their connection to the very same uh, figures we're looking at in the Bible. And, and I say figures because you know, how do you classify Raphaim and, and the Nephilim? Um, the Native Americans call them the great spirits, right? They were, they were all these spirits that, that were teaching them wisdom Sounds to me like Raphaim. Um, but does that make them not a people uh, worthy to, uh, to the kingdom of, of Yahuwah? I think, it, I think that they are connected to the tribes. I felt that way about the Hawaiian people. Uh, I was looking for confirmation um, for us to come here. I was very happy in central Utah. It's a beautiful place. There's peace there. I felt shalom. I called it my Valley of Shalom. We were in between two mountains in a, in a very high, uh, they called it a high desert, um, but, but not so really. It was just, a, a, I think it was a perfect place to be uh, uh, homesteading and, and in the end times. But these doors started open. 
right? And so now I have to consider why, what, what's the purpose? Why are you taking us here? Um, all these questions, I didn't want to just go on a whim. Can you imagine being in the middle of moving your life? And it was enormous, guys. It wasn't just what we could fit into a, the biggest Hertz moving truck they had. Uh, it was everything. Um, what we couldn't carry, we didn't, we didn't get back. But going across the Mojave Desert, can you imagine being in the middle of going across the Mojave Desert and you're finding out it's not you who's will? This is a bad time. <laughs> Don't tell me this, right? I didn't want to be in that predicament. And so I sought him and, and I needed several, um, I needed several witnesses. Uh, first of all, the doors just began to fling open, right? What was closed before and we couldn't get past, he was all of a sudden opening these doors and with each step opening another door um, and guiding our steps. And I kid you not guys, Darla is my witness. My family is a witness. We probably saw 150 different people. I sometimes say 200 or more because that's what it felt like. And I was tired of it. I was tired of being let down. This was not happening. Um, originally, we, we knew we were going somewhere. Darla had plans to go to Belize. And even with that, I, I had to seek Yahuwah and get a confirmation. Where are we going? I know it's not here. We're not supposed to be here. I felt led that we, we were supposed to go somewhere. And he began to communicate this. Um, through prayer, through things he was showing me in the codes, through confirmations that were not connected to the codes, um, doors opening, the, the lady that finally came, and apparently this was her dream house. That's her exact words. She, she was looking to come back home. She spent many years away from the area, and she had a specific house and setup she wanted. She's a horse lady. Um, she wanted to be off grid. Every little detail that, because basically the house was a niche kind of house. If you really weren't into off grid and isolation, this was not for you, right? It, it was very specific kind of setup. Um, and it took us, that's why we, we saw so many people. It was like, no, nah, this is not exactly what we were looking for. We do want to be off grid, but we don't want to be disconnected and isolated. <laughs> I could see for 25 miles down the valley, guys, to the Manti Temple. Our closest neighbors were miles from us. Um, we had wide open space and we could see for a long way. Great view of the stars. People, you know, that's not something people are drawn to. They want neighbors, they want a nice community, they want a baseball field and, you know, soccer and all that kind of stuff, right? Nope, not there. Cows and wide open field. So specifically, it needed a, a buyer and she came. Um, she was a horse lady, like I said. It was the perfect setup for her. She fell in love with it, and her exact quote was, this is my dream house. And she took it. Now, you who opened that door, and he's continuing to open the doors, led us all the way. Guys, I, I, was, a, I was ready to, to let go of my cows at some point because I could not fathom the father was going to move them also. I just couldn't see it. It was just hard because we didn't have the money. We had what we had on the sale and uh, we didn't, we didn't exactly get all that at, at one time. We, we got enough to get out of the house and get started. And so we were officially sojourners and I thought I was going to lose my cows. And uh, of course you guys know they came later, but again, you opened those doors. He didn't just give us those cows for nothing. He had a plan the whole time. And, and we're seeing Matt manifest now why he had this plan, why he introduced us to these belted, beautiful belted cows that are on the endangered list. I didn't know anything about them. Um, I, I didn't specifically go looking for them. He, he just kind of put it on our plate and was like, you're going to build with this. This is your seed. And uh, we've grown to what we are now and uh i'm thankful that he opened all the doors guys we, we we were just faithful to step to keep stepping and to keep following his voice um he had a purpose for us coming here so i thought what is it is what is it the people let's let's look at the people what are we talking about here okay they're a native people they're not original from here right because hawaii's um, relatively new because it's it was growing out of the sea 
Yahuwah drew it out of the sea from volcanic eruption. There's only been people here for 1400 years. So the first Hawaiians came from somewhere. Where, where did they come from? And so thus started my research into them. And it became clear to me after just looking at some of the, the, the words of, of Hawaiian language and meeting some people in, in our first time that we came here, that there was a connection to the, to the tribes, no doubt. And I, I was just so thrilled at that because now I had purpose. Now I could see that he was possibly sending us here um, to be a connection. Um, because at that time we were, it was, you know, we're, look, we know we're, the, we're part of the tribes. Um, he said, go after the lost sheep, right? So there, there's still people still waking up. Um, we're, we're seeing this reconciliation. So it made sense that he, he probably had us coming here to, you know, minister to, and and be there as a connection point. Um, but there was much more than that, guys. It was not just that. He, he was putting us on a set-apart place. And later came to find out, that, you know, the, the Hawaiian name, Hawaii. Uh, his Yahuwah's name in reverse, uh, it, phonetically, you can pr it's pronounced the same way. It, it's Yahuwah uh, in the Hawaiian language. So that really hit me. And it was like, wow. You said in your word, my, your name will be like a strong tower. And, and we could run to it and be safe because I was getting a lot of flack from people saying, hey, Jonathan, you're going to live on a volcano. Well, well technically it's five volcanoes, but right. I, I serve the one who created <laughs> this place. Uh, and I, I, was, I wasn't going to let the, the enemy try to steal that from me. I knew there was a purpose. There was I, had a, I had a hard time understanding that too until you started explaining to me all the revelations that the Holy Spirit yeah. was laying on you. And I'm like, okay, I need to just. I, I knew the, <laughs> the, amount of, the, the amount of people that were like, no, Jonathan, this is wrong. You shouldn't go there. Especially when the, when the lava started happening. It was like, I told you, you got to get out of there. You got to flee. And uh, there was no fear at all it was the most exciting time of my life and me and darla experienced to get together we became official lava chasers um we were given front row seats to it by the favor of yahuwah he had a purpose in us calling on his name meeting jason the whole thing and so i, I then began to see that oh this is much more than just coming in and being a light into the nations right so to speak um he's going to do something here but then I began to realize, wow, um, we're also in the best place in the world to view the stars. That's why these telescopes are here. And I began to think back to the time I, I was walking our family dog one night under the stars as a, as a boy. And um, I felt like the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. I was at that time really terrified about the end times because the preacher I was under at that time was like the rapture was happening tomorrow. Get ready, right? So he had me terrified at 12 years old and I was praying under the stars one night and I felt peace come over me. The Holy spirit told me that you would, you would live through these times. You would, you would see all of this. And, uh, there was no fear at that point. Um, I, I was an avid reader of the Re book of revelation as a teenager because I, I felt like the Holy spirit told me I was going to live during this time. So I read it all, you know, all of Revelation. Me and my brother would read it to, to each other. But anyway, the, the, the coming to Hawaii, getting the perspective that he's given us here um, and the potential to be um, light into the nations, to be a refuge. Um, this is a set apart place. He's shown me. Um, I'm not saying it's better than any other place because really it, it does if he's marked you and he's designated you as a refuge a place of safety because there's going to be more than one um all around scattered all around there's going to be places people are going to flee to they're going to congregate they're going to be connected because they have a common you know a commonality which is the torah and yahuwah and the name and you know truth right we see it already um we're not the only hebrews on this island one of my neighbors of way off to the northwest of us uh, came over one day with her husband and introduced uh, herself to us. And, uh, you know, is that you guys that play the shofar? And, uh, so they heard the shofar one day. My son was 
doing the shofar at Shabbat, and they they went and looking and uh, found this, and we found that they were Hebrews. Um, I think I don't know if they're really woke woke, uh, like they're walking in Torah, but they're surely aware of the the feast and things like that. Uh, they weren't in the name or anything, but Yahuwah showed us that we just you know shofar shout. There's Hebrews very close to us. Um, sometimes we feel alone we call out on him like, you know, Elijah crying out to the father because he felt like he was, he, he was about to be killed and he was being pursued and, you know, felt like he was the only, only prophet. And you were quickly remind him, you know, I got 7,000 prophets at the ready right now. What are you worried about? Right. <laughs> so uh, he's got us scattered all around. He's put his name on us. Um, and he is quite skilled at precision warfare, like 10,000 at one side and 1,000 at another. And not one hair on your head is harmed. That is precision, right? When you're seeing him fall into your left and to your right, and he is, he is not letting anything happen to you. The three, the three uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, that's seven times greater than it was. And not one hair on their head. That's supernatural protection. And that that's going to happen again. When he's, you know, there's a former rain and a latter rain, guys, where um, there, there's these, the manifestations of Yahuwah are evident. Like, for instance, during the time of the Exodus, Yahuwah was doing all of these signs and wonders in their face, right? And so there was really no no, no excuse for failure. Right, because he's in their midst doing signs and wonders. Then we go into a period where we don't really see Yahuwah on the scene, and he's not like that with with everybody. There's no, what do they call it, the dark ages, right? This is how I see it: that in the former reign and the latter reign are going to be the times where Yahuwah is manifested. But there is a time where he's not there, where you don't see him manifesting like he did in the exodus which is mighty with an outstretched arm and a mighty hand right he, he appeared to him as a fire a column of fire as column of smoke um he's leading them feeding them he's bringing them water he's doing everything right same thing's going to happen again we're going to see that kind of manifestation but this time he's pouring his spirit out upon all flesh and we're going to be seeing miracles and even greater than the ones Yeshua did. He says that. And that's that's pretty big. We're talking about people raising from the dead if, you, if you're going to be greater than Yeshua, right? So it has that happened yet? I don't think so. I don't think, I think potentially at Shavuot, like like when the spirit is poured out the first time, right? That's, that's, the out, that's the first outpouring when it happened, when they got literally, it's not figurative, cloven fire. They're, 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 illuminated because of the spirit right and i've heard in a lot of movements guys and route uh, revivals and uh you know pentecostal movements where they're talking about tongues of fire right but it but they're speaking symbolically i think there is literally fire that that's apparent um when the spirit is poured out when he pours out his spirit uh, you're going to have this glow about you um because it's his spirit um, that's an exciting thought. Potentially coming up with uh, Shavuot just around the corner, um, the real Shavuot. Uh, the windows of heaven are opened up during these feasts. And so when they're in one mind and one accord and they're waiting on him, wow, guys. So, yeah, so I think we should be this Sunday broadcasting and spending time with each other because it's a it's a feast day and it can be expected he's going to pour out his spirit now is, is shavao uh for everybody on sunday or is some on monday or that's a good question darla yeah i i addressed that in water cooler in a long detail okay, okay darla says she put it in the water cooler in okay. a long detail. so are we first watch then we're first watch and then it will continue to unfold okay so the it'll is, that's good so we'll begin with us. We will begin with us. And the, the thing is, is we, we, think of, we think of things in terms of the Gregorian calendar. July, the 20th, July, is it Sunday, is it Monday? 
but the day begun, begins in Hawaii, right. and it continues over 24-hour time zones. Right. Okay. Yeah. It begins. So that, that's another thing he's shown us about why he brought us here, because we are so close to the date line and when things change that normally we're on the third watch, guys, if you want to look at it as a watchman on the wall. So, so, so that you have these different times blocks that are broken down for a watchman um, because you can't be watching all the time, right? You got to sleep and you need to sleep safely, right? This is the, the, the model of, of what a watchman is when we're talking military. Right in the Marines, they taught me to walk my post in a military manner, keeping always on the alert and reporting everything that happens with insider hearing. That's a watchman. So my brothers can be assured that when you're on duty or I'm on duty, you can sleep safely because there's a watchman. Right? It's an important job. So third watch, we're we're looking at everything going on in the world while you guys are sleeping. The the mainland, and so he, he revealed that to me. Um, we're so far behind you guys. We're six hours behind East Coast, three hours behind West Coast. So um, we're further back. And so I thought that was pretty cool because he, he started showing me the, the, the purpose of watching and, and why it's important that there's always somebody observing and paying attention because you don't want to be blindsided, guys. You don't want to be sleeping like sheep and clustered all together and, and not concerned what's happening externally because the, the wolf is there, or maybe there's danger, right? A forest fire, whatever, whatever the imagery is. So um, you're, you're on the opposite end this time. You're, you're the first watch. Exactly. So it's, it's during this, because of uh, the count, now we're first watch. So um, Shalva would be, because we saw the, the moon um, uh, at, at Rosh Chodesh, the beginning of the count, it's interesting because it's, it's not, it's abnormal. We're not usually first watch, but in this case it is. And so um, we can officially kick it off with uh, the Sunday broadcast. And, um, you know, instead of exclusively talking about codes, we can transition and make it also about Shavuot, the importance of it, how the count is. Um, this will also set up, um, it'll be fresh in my mind when I'm with uh, Diane and Zen. Because I do believe this year coming up, who's going to re reconcile us even more. If you've been paying attention, anybody who's been trying to figure out the calendar have been every year have been getting closer and closer and closer. Um, there's not so many divisions. People are, are, are coming in and it's with steps. We're not going to get it all at one time because we're, it's foreign to us. Right. He said in his word, he's going to cause us to forget. All right. So now we're remembering. So how much time is it? Uh, okay, so I've been doing it at noon. So um, what time will it be on Sunday at noon? Okay, so it'll be noon for me. And it'll be 6 o'clock East Coast. It'll be uh, 3 o'clock, Darla, is it 3 o'clock West Coast? Yeah. 3 o'clock West very Coast. Very so that will be the time. Wherever you are in between or on those coasts, um, that'll be the time. I'll I'll post a link over in um, Discord and give you guys a heads up um, that we're going to go on. And so you could and prepare. Um, should be a good broadcast. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I'd like to do that with you guys in the, in the coming feast, and especially when we start the year again at, at Passover and um, we begin to count. I would love to count the whole year uh, and keep it with everybody. I think if we can get in the in this in the rhythm of his uh, count, then we'll see. Uh, it, that's what it took for me. It took me actually living on it. If I see it on paper, it's like that doesn't even make any sense. But when it, when you're when you're in sync with him, and and guys, when I got in sync with, it, I, I noticed that it wasn't just me in sync. It was all of nature, even the animals you you'll be surprised at what they know about the heavens and Yahuwah because it's very clear to me I, I don't know darling am I, am I wrong that the animals kind of know when it's Shabbat right and they act differently they'll they'll all be kind of lounging um they're not more running around and foraging and all that kind of stuff they're just kind of laid back and uh I started seeing hey, <laughs> hey don't don't be shooting at me it's Shabbat yeah. 
Uh, it's, hey, I have a story on that, by the way, which I was going to, I, I had thought about it when it happened and then I never shared it with any of you guys, but if you don't mind me sharing it. Sure, uh, brother. There was one, you know, as I've been trying to discern this um, sanctuary up in Vermont, uh, there was this one, um, I believe it was a Saturday when it was Shabbat, and he told me, I want you to go up there on Shabbat. And so, um, I don't know how to explain this, but um, there are times when I know that I'm getting a word from him because I feel it's like a punch in my heart and it's like this overwhelming joy that brings me to tears. It's, it doesn't happen very often. It's like, I can, it's like happened like twice or three times in my life, but I was driving along and I, um, and I was driving, uh, uh, one thing about Vermont, that's where Ben and Jerry's ice cream is from. It's cause they have a lot of cows. There's a huge amount of dairy farms in Vermont. And so I'm driving through there on Shabbat and all the cows are lying down. And, uh, and I don't think anything of it. I go, Oh, cool, all the cows are lying down, because, uh, uh, you know, sometimes when it rains, the cows will lie down, but as I'm driving along, like, not one cow is standing up, <laughs> which is really odd, right, and I'm driving along, I'm driving along, and I, you know, I almost sort of half forget it's Shabbat, and then I realize, oh, it's Shabbat, and all the cows are laying down, and it came to me, and it said, they're respecting Yahuwah's Shabbat, and right when I thought that thought, I got that, that confirmation feeling in my heart that huge punch of joy that brings me to tears yeah I so i knew i knew that was from him i think he was showing you the the relation to you yeah i think so there is a there is a rhythm that is happening right in in i don't know it, it was like an epiphany to me one day and I, same kind of thing i felt assured this was what he was showing me um so that's really interesting marty yeah i was driving from like what you know this is this is maybe a three, four hour drive. I'm driving from one end of the state to the other. Not one cow standing up the whole time. And I thought to myself, wow, they're all respecting the Shabbat. Bam. <laughs> Confirmation. Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't just cows. I saw the same thing with chickens. Like yeah. normally we got chickens running around and they're destroying or digging up the garden and clucking and all this kind of stuff. Then you'll see them. They're kind of just They'll take a dirt bath, right, where they're getting all the dirt on them and they're kind of rolling around in the ground. But then they'll lounge around most of the day. They're mm -hmm. not really active as, as they normally are. And then maybe I thought, is this just a coincidence? So I, I begin to look at this every month and every every week, just observing. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing what Yahuwah will teach you through the animals and the critters that he's, he's given us. It's amazing. You guys got anything else you want to share? But quick, John's coming. We gotta lie down. It's Shabbat. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. This year. An outpouring from the Rock Hakadosh on believers. Yeah. You guys hear what she said? Let's consider that. What do you think an outpouring would look like? Um, I think it would be same, the same as the first, that there would be yeah, a visual That's evidence that, that something is happening. I think a, a lot of us will have an experience that we'll want to share. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> All right, so I'll be probably working on uh, a couple of tables that he's given me. I'll go back to, I know one is uh, the, the calendar of the Hebrews, um, because I really think he's going to reconcile um, any confusion with his calendar. Um, he's drawing us close to him, not, not scattering us with confusion. So um, he's loving and patient. It's not about who's right or who's wrong. It's about getting to the truth, right? We want to know what, how this works, how his calendar is. Um, by the way, it's it's rather difficult to come out of Babylon, and to and to get off one calendar and go live on the other. So many times you have to you have to stride the fence, right, and ride both calendars, right? Because you just can't tear yourself away, especially when you got to do business in the world. 
um, you know, banks, the, you know, the post office, you have to live on this calendar. Um, so to, to start living on another one, it can be difficult guys and don't let it stress you out. Um, you know, some are convicted to try to get a job where, where they can observe, but don't let it stress you out. Um, all of this is going to be reconciled in the kingdom. That's when it's going to matter. Uh, he's drawing us close to him now. So we're still learning and, um, we got to have patience with people who are not on the same page. If, if they're not in the name, but they're close, you know, they're still saying Jesus and God and Lord and all that kind of stuff. Um, patience. You won't hear me uh, hammering somebody who is, um, who's walking with us. If, if they're going in the same direction, they just may not be on the same uh, page or module. or module or whatever. How are you want to, everyone is on the same walk. We're all going in the same direction. Um, I do. I see believers sometimes just hammering people like on Facebook that I think it does more damage than, than good. With, I, I, with, I had to learn that because I was, I'll admit, I was really bad for that coming where it came from. Uh, I had to learn, okay, listen, the, be the best way to minister to somebody is to listen. You listen to what they have to say and then try to relate to what they're saying to what the scripture is saying. That takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of tolerance, a lot of love suffering to just let the person talk. We all know they're lost. They're coming from a pagan lifestyle. So you, or even another believer, they're coming from a dip. They're living in a different part of, we move from glory to glory to glory. They may be back here in this glory. We may be over here in this glory. It doesn't mean neither one of us to say we're just at a different level of, of understanding and walking with, Father Yahuwah. So we have to have tolerance and patience. Yeah. And I had to learn that the hard way, but I did learn that. I did too. And uh, got convicted one day when something um, Adam from Parable of Vineyard. Um, so I do learn from others, you know, other, other teachers. Sometimes I uh, can be dogmatic when I don't intend to be, but it's, uh, it's I think for, for the good, I really want people to get, the understanding of Paul and why it seems like he's bipolar. We need to get to the root of that instead of just accepting it as a thing. Okay, well, he must be talking to two different groups. And, and it's kind of frustrating that there are still people out there that, um, that, that, that are just neck deep in false doctrine that arose from not understanding what Paul meant and said and who he was and where he came from. Um, when you do that, when you, when you go and you dig and you begin to see, okay, who is Gamliel? Why is he sitting at the feet of Gamliel? Well, well Gamliel is one of the, he's one of the sages the Jews exalt today of the Talmud. He was a father of the Talmud, guys. And so the religion of the Jews mentioned in, in Yeshua's time was Talmud, um, not Torah. And so this is, this is a foundational understanding that's critical and if you if you've missed that point then it's going to appear to you law is law um when we're talking about oral or torah and so it gets confusing and you get this appearance that paul is bipolar um he is not he he had okay all the jews had lost the torah when they were in babylon so what happens in babylon they started following after the rabbis the elders and they continued with that when they came back into the land. Remember Ezra and Nehemiah, they're, they're just finding the law and, and it was hidden. Jeremiah hid it and they were finding it during the restoration. So it was foreign to them. They were, they were, remember the king rent his garments when they found the Torah. Uh, they were, they were following after rabbis and it got worse. It was still in its infancy when Yeshua come on the scene, you know, about 150 years, 200 years but it had enough time to start a foothold with the people and become what was called the, the religion of the Jews. Talmudism, it's, it still exists today. The Jews with the funny hat and the little curly Q things, that's what they do. They follow the rabbis. The, the, the Babylonian agricultural calendar and the Hebraic agricultural calendar 
looking at that through the eyes of an unbeliever or a pagan would almost look like the, exactly the same thing. Yeah. When you start getting into the scripture, you're going to find that you've got a halal calendar. And, and by the way, halal, halal is also a sage of the Talmud, guys. Right. Halal the Great. These are contemporaries and even before, came before Gamliel. So the very guy who made the calendar for the Jews today, think about that. He existed before the time of Yeshua, right? And he started laying out calendars based on mathematic calculation and the stars. And he, he's been very accurate in, in the calendar that, he's, that he established, but we quickly were seeing, and at least for me, and right. we, start, we started around 2015, we started waking up to the fact that the Halal calendar was not the right calendar. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. But that's what's cited today with, with most is Halal's calendar. The, the, this, this is the confusion, actually, that Peter has. Is, is he does understand there's actually two calendars. The Babylonians were mimicking what the, the Hebrews were doing. And and when they went into Babylonian captivity, it was kind of very easy for them to accept the Babylonian calendar because they were doing practically the same thing. It was all based on the agricultural calendar. Mm. Uh, and so this this is kind of where Peter is, is having a problem discerning the two different differences because there originally was an agricultural calendar. I mean, it was, that was set in Genesis chapter one, verse 14, when he set the sun, moon and the stars in in their place. Yeah. The agricultural calendar has been there forever. Actually was there before the Enoch calendar. Yeah. So is somebody somewhere along perverted it? Well, Uh, it's like I tried to explain to them. The Egyptians didn't invent the the virgin birth, but yet they had a virgin birth. Where did they get that from? They got it from the Hebrews. Okay, so there there there's there's a counter counterfeit at work here that looks like it, but you gotta examine it to see that there are actually two calendars going on: and a halal calendar and an abid calendar, the the biblical, the real calendar, and that's what we're following. Yeah, you know anything that Enoch was on was pre-flood. Um, th- there was a galactic interaction between planets during the deluge. Um, this changed the orbit of, of the earth and days and seasons. And even the year was changed. Um, the atmosphere was also changed. So there was a lot of changes post Enoch. Um, you know, people lived for a very long time up to that point, but, but slowly, slowly that began to change. Um, even today we're, we're, we're not a people who live not a many of us live past a hundred. Um, it's rare, but there was something different about the earth and the atmosphere and nutrition um, than it is today. The position, um, the very position that the earth was in, it wasn't even in, at the axis that we're in now. It was probably yeah. probably set differently. Yeah. Since some have even recorded where the sun actually starts at the east and goes to the west. Yeah. Instead of the other way around says <laughs> there so something has happened into the position of the earth so it's it's hard for it to really follow the ancient st- star maps yeah you have to you have to account for the perturbation right um, for, for instance joshua's long day um this there was a consequence to that right so um it, it had to be a readjusted back somewhere else in history um but those things got to be considered when we're talking about a span of time and, and how a day was compared to 3,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago. Um, it could be much different. So um, but with the pattern that he's laid out with this rhythm of the sun, moon, and stars and it, in its seasons, and there is clear, it's clearly a, a clock. The, the whole solar system is like a big clock that he wound up with his hand. And, um, and everything is in a sequence with that. Even the, the tides of the ocean, low tide, high tide, it's all based on the moon and the, and the interaction with the moon, right? Um, it's a rhythm to it. Going fishing, it's, it's also interacts with the moon. There, there are times where you're not going to catch any fish. But if you go on this time, which is more closer to new moon, you're going to catch a lot of fish. And that is 
that has been a thing since ancient times. That's not new news. <laughs> this is a well-known fact today with fishermen timing on when to go fishing, when to not go fishing, because it's, it's pretty much guaranteed. Um, if you go when it's the least likely to catch fish, you're not gonna catch any fish. But if you go when it's high time, when it's the, the peak time, you're gonna catch a lot of fish. It, it, right, so the, 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 the pattern is, is established and, and therefore you can interact with it, right? It's like a calendar. It's, it's like pretty certain, right? All of nature is on this. And when I come to that realization and, and, and began, I was falling into place in a, in a cadence of, of the most high. You could, you could definitely see that there's a rhythm involved. And it was, an, it, like I said, it, it was an epiphany for me one day. Um, and I'm just totally amazed at the detail. Um, the chaos comes from the enemy, right? When he gets us out of sync with the father. And um, when that happens, then it's, it's like the, it translates into your life where there are times where there are just tough days, right? And things like never go right, right? Wake up in the morning, get a flat tire, and before it's over, someone's backed into your car, and whatever. You know, you're having a bad day. It's like, what's happening? Um, anyway, uh, just kind of rambling on now, guys. I don't mean to keep you so late. It's been a long class. Ramble, ramble. Can I, can I show you this uh, one table before we Absolutely, cut off? sure. Um, this is the one American or uh, uh, native La Lamed Yod Lamed Yod Dalit Aleph Mem Resh Kuth Hey to the native and then America American to the Native Americans. Um, you have from the Hopi right here. From the Hopi prophet and then from the throne prophet. There's two different prophets here. One from the throne, one from the Hopis. And my name actually runs right along the top here. Kaf, Resh, Yod, Samak. And you have the word bef before the tabernacle. And then you have the one, the one sent, uh, my firstborn is right here and what I find interesting about this table is look what's running right through at the very bottom is Hosea um, blow ye the coronet and give ye all and the trumpet and Rama cry aloud in Beth Haven after the O Benjamin Ephraim shall be desolate in the day of rebuke among the tribes of Israel have I made known that which I uh, which shall surely be the princes of Judah were like them that removed the bound. Therefore, I will pour out my wrath upon them like the waters of the, the, the bound. Probably, I think, could be talking about the, the land boundaries. Because that's what they did. They, they moved, moved it so all of Israel became Judah instead of 12 tribes. Uh, Ephraim is oppressed. Where the Native Americans come from, they come from Ephraim. Ephraim is oppressed and broken in judgment because he willingly walked after the commandments. Therefore, will I be unto Ephraim as a moth and unto the house of Judah as rottenness. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his wound, then went Ephraim to the Assyrians to, and sent the king yet could not be healed or cured or wound. Okay, you'd have to go back and scripture read all about that. But here you have this Hosea was a prophet in the midst of Ephraim, and he took a harlot for a wife. Uh, and a lot of it is talking about Ephraim and their sins. Um, but here you have that admission here. Uh, Ephraim is oppressed and broken in judgment because he willingly walked after the commandments. And you see that today, how the Native, Native Americans were actually taking up Father Yahuwah, his name, uh, his salvation and his commandments. Uh, Chief Joseph Riverwind is an example of that. Uh, but over here you have the, uh, with the tribes of Israel is recorded right here. Right, right above it you have with the throne or with the mercy seat, Bet Calf, 
Samak Aleph, and this is the word birthright. Bet Aleph Resh He, or Bet Kaf Resh He, sorry. The word birthright is here with the throne in, in the tribes of Israel. I find it interesting because it's the, it's the access term that's keying this in. So obviously this has a relationship with the Native Americans. And they actually have a birthright with the tribes of Israel here. Uh, and then you have with the, uh, for the covenant, uh, uh, with, with, with the, the sukkah, his sukkah, or for, in, in his sukkah, with his sukkah, which is kind of interesting. Down here you have Joseph twice. Joseph is connected to his throne. Um, yeah, Peter here. Peter's Peter's everywhere in these Native American tables, by the way. I really believe that that brother Peter is going to play a pivotal role in, in bringing the Native Americans back in, into the covenant. I could, I could what see he's that. Doing. I, I, I really believe that. It's actually a high population. I mean, he's going to come in contact with a lot of natives just interacting in town, going to Walmart, wherever you do, because the, he's basically in the middle of a rev reservation. Um, but the area is very similar to the climate. I think it's even along the same parallel as it the today in the desert. The tabernacle where he plans to put it is on, on the exact parallel as the Temple Mount in Israel. <laughs> Yeah. And if you look at the, the terrain, it's very similar. It's all rocky. Yeah. Yeah. I said that many times as yeah. Dal and I drove around and interacted with the area. Um, I, I made a, a few times that observation. I thought it was kind of cool that he had us living in a high desert um, climate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that calling? Sure. Oh. Tribe, tribe where he is is a good place to see the stars um yes yes we were talking about cameras and he was asking advice on that so i gave him some uh information because he he said it's pitch black there you see the stars you oh, see yeah. everything you you just probably just like way. hawaii yeah four thousand uh, feet above sea level so he has a really good view and there's no uh, light pollution see i don't think i, I envy you guys <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's an accident, guys. That he's 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 bringing us back to to his sounding board or his communication board, right? Um, imagine the days of old, Abraham, Isaac, they were shown things in the stars. You would told Abraham, look up at look up the stars and number them because your seed is going to be like the stars. So so we're coming back to that right we live in a time where you're stuck to your device right looking down at your iphone but he's bringing he's bringing the remnant back to the ancient path right looking up and and seeing what is happening yeah uh you have in Sh in shiloh for david with yahuwah right here across crossing the access term that's why i said what i said you're you're right he he brings us he brings us out of this contemporary world that we live in and he brings us back to to his spirit and he shows us i mean he wants us to understand the ancient ways he he wants us to know that the new isn't better than the old but there is an old world that ex explains how our world works and the way things are better than our contemporary world our contemporary world, we have NASA, the scientific community, and our, and our two-tier science. They don't want us to know how things work, like how comets work, you know. Um, but uh, he wants to bring us back to those old ways, how, how you know, how the Shavuot works, and how the feasts work, and, 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 I think that's in uh, Jeremiah 6, 16. 
Yeah, there. Thus saith Yahuwah, stand ye in the ways and seek and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find the rest of your souls. <laughs> but they said, we will not walk, you know, and also the watchmen over them heard the sound of the trumpet, but they said, we will not hearken. So this I mean, that's, is that's just Jeremiah talking, but yeah. he, the, he's talking through the prophet Jeremiah standing in the in the ways and seek and ask for the old paths he wants us to ask for these things yeah yeah and you also see the rim i mean excuse me the um attitude of like you know those that we've been trying to reach that it's still right. you know nailed to the cross doing christmas and easter because it's tradition and completely rejecting truth Hear, hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my laws, but rejected. That's the end result. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and people say, Yahuwah won't bring evil upon us. <laughs> yes, he will. Yeah, right there. I will bring you up. If people. you're caught up in them stumbling blocks and you're rejecting when truth is being presented to you, and you have the attitude, "Oh, he knows my heart," um, I speak English, you know, all these little catchphrases that we we hear, um, they're really just saying, "I'm too lazy." It's basically what it is. You know, I'm happy where I'm at. You know, don't don't stir it up for me. But, but for some they they love truth and they want they want to uh, obtain it here ephraim is oppressed and broken in judgment because he willingly walked after the commandments <laughs> he's walking amongst people who are like it says in here we will not hearken we're walking amid amongst that it's very hard um but what we're about to do on Sunday, uh, observing Shabbat and getting together and, and asking for this old path, I think that's exactly what our Heavenly Father wants us to do. So, uh, yeah, amen to that. Throw, throw that in there. We got any questions? You guys got questions or anything you want, want to bring up? Yeah, how will you celebrate Shavuot? Shavuot. Um, if you were, if you, if, if you were growing that wheat, day. right? Um, we usually bake a couple of loaves, don't we, darling? Some challah bread. We bake, we make bread, and uh huh. Because we're not growing feet, uh, you know, fields of wheat. It's it's a harvest festival, and um. During that time, they harvest the grain, they process the grain, they make loaves, they, they do a wave offering. Wait, so you just walk outside with your yes. loaves, and we're just giving thanks. And that's is what it? they're doing, is giving thanks for the harvest that, he, that he's given us. We're acknowledging that we've come through the harvest, the, the growth and the harvest cycle. We, mm -hmm. we are, we are um, giving back to him, and he wants our praises, right? That's what he says. Thanks, praise. Yeah. And so we're thanking him for, for giving us our daily bread, right? Is, is it uh, two leavened bro? Yeah, yeah leavened, leavened bread or is it unleavened bread? It's leavened. It's, it's leavened. leavened. Okay. So you guys, it's, it can make it fun. Make you get with your kids and get your hands all in some dough and make some challah bread and, and you know, braid it and, and bake it. And then um, at the end of the oh, day, yeah. at the end of the day, you, you just walk outside with it, with your kids or whoever, your family, and we, and we just all give thanks, right? And so that's what we've been doing. Because we're not, we're not harvesting grain, um, even though he did give us grain, guys, supernaturally in the backyard. I don't know if you guys remember the clutch of grain I, I, I picked, but he, he put it there. And I think that was at a B, by the way. He does things supernaturally yeah. in his time. And so we made... Um, like when we do Passover, we don't we don't do it like the Jews. I, I it's a feast. It's about remembering Him. It's about remembering what Yeshua did and in the connection. And so we we honor Him just by observing and in 
it, it may not be all the T's are crossed and all the I's are dotted, right? Uh, we're not it's, a memori- it's a memorial and a, and a barbecue. It's, it's a memorial. So we're, we're, he said, for all your generations, a memorial. So we're supposed to remember. And a rehearsal. That's a good point, Darwin. What do you cook besides uh, the collard bread well, or the... For, um, there, there's nothing listed. You don't, you don't have to prepare a meal like you do in Passover and all that kind of stuff. So you can pretty much improvise and do, mm-hmm. do something that you want to do. It's really about memorial and, right. remembering, and remembering the day and observing it, right? And in the attic, right. everyone being in one mind and one accord. Mm-hmm. And I, even though we're not all in the same upper room, guys, we can be together online. Um, and I think, I think that's a, I think there's power in that because he said we're two or three gathered. I'm there. So if we do a broadcast, we're honoring him. We're, we're keeping the, sh- the, the Shavuot. Um, I think teaching yeshua was teaching his disciples at passover guys he wasn't he wasn't making all these statements you know this is my blood he wasn't starting a ritual which is called the eucharist he was explaining to his disciples who had kept passover all their lives and and you're probably at some point as a kid going why do we do this why are we you know why what's with why well yeshua was teaching them at the quote last supper he was not yeah the eucharist he was a hebrew jew keeping the passover seder and he was teaching his disciples you know this is my blood and it's going to be spilled for you and when he broke the bread the unleavened bread the sinless bread that's pierced i mean the 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 parallels and the imagery to yeshua is overwhelming so i can just see the wheels turning in the disciples when they're looking at this it's my body right they may not have got it in the moment but i guarantee you after after the resurrection and they're putting the pieces together imagine it's all flicking now oh you know even the details to it the the, the bread is bruised and it's striped and it's pierced right right broken you know so I think it's all, it's about teaching and he's want, he wants us to know um, what it's all about. Memorial, remembering. So on Shabbat, mm-hmm. that's, that's what mm-hmm. we'll do. We'll, we'll bake some bread. We'll give thanks. We'll teach. We'll talk about the, you know, why it, it's a harvest. So we're, we're growing wheat. Um, it's a hundred day cycle. Now is this something you're going to be recording? It'll, it'll automatically be recorded because we're doing it live. It'll, it'll automatically be archived yeah okay yeah we'll be doing it live um we we're in the midst of something very special yahushua has already left for heaven on the cloud and we're waiting for the holy spirit to be poured down upon Uh, so it's it's we're we're in that middle of that 10-day period he left after 40 days and then the holy spirit came on the 50th day yeah Uh, we're 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 in that that ten day period, which is awesome. And to be very technical, it, it's actually the second because it's two counts, guys, and that's the confusion about how it's in the English, so, right? So you've got seven Sabbaths complete, right? And then the morrow after, we count fifty. So what does that mean? Seven Sabbaths complete. That's forty nine days. No, it isn't. <laughs> Say again. Counting the new moon days is 52. Sorry. <laughs> correction. And so Marty was on me, right? <laughs> 52 days because you right. Correction. <laughs> yeah. And so that's, and, and how it works out when you count that next 50, it just happens to be the exact amount of days to grow wheat. It's connected to that harvest. And so they're counting the days um, because they need to know when the harvest, they've never done it before. When they come out of the, well, when they come out of the Exodus and you who is laying out the pattern, imagine they're in, that's the mountain, right? They've brought grains with them, right? So at the very first, the very first one, there's no, there's no grains growing. He's establishing it as a memorial right. for all of your generations, right? So from that point on, every, every year, you know, because not everybody was farming grains, all of the community would be counting up until the harvest mm-hmm. and it would be a big celebration then because now we've come through the whole we've come through the whole growth cycle there weren't any locusts that destroyed it 
There wasn't any floods. They counted every day. It's a marker. So he's keeping time throughout the whole year. And this particular feast, it's a big count. They call it the counting the Omer. It's a big count. But the, but the, uh -huh. the misunderstanding it and losing it through history because it was lost, especially when you have wars and stuff like World War II and, and many Jews left religion. There are many atheist um, survivors of concentration camp Jews who are not religious. And so it's lost to them. So um, it doesn't surprise me that um, a people who are not agriculturally tied anymore, Jewish people are more tied to um, diamonds and to uh, Wall Street and to real estate and things like that that make them wealthy and not growing grains, <laughs> right? So it's lost. There are some people in Israel today that are, that are in sync with that, right? And many believers go over there during these times to, to check the fields. Well, there, there are farmers there now, but it's a very small niche, guys. We're not an agriculturally driven people anymore. Um, we're coinage, gold and silver. Right? There are commodities traded, but um, the almighty dollar, that's where they worship, right? So bringing us back to his ways, the ancient past, to nature, and when you get exposed to agricultural, right, and you, now you're counting, all right, so, okay, we've counted 50 days. Wait a minute, the, the grain's still in the field. Wait a minute, something's wrong here. What is wrong? Okay, let's look at that again. All right, so I know because I'm growing grain, the growth cycle is 102 days. Wait a minute, we're only counting 50 days. It make any sense. You can't grow wheat in 50 days. Okay, so something's going on, and now we see it. Okay, so seven Sabbaths complete, and then the morrow after, count 50. You get 102. It's the growth cycle of wheat. And so I was stunned uh, when he revealed this to me. Some of you already knew this. Uh, I, I thought Inga was already there. She knew, she knew this connection, and it wasn't clicking with me until I started paying attention to agriculture. And growth cycles and um, what it means because we're all stalks of weed in the field um, he's given us that connection that representation in the scriptures all right um, there's a harvest day there's well excuse me there's a there's a seed planting day there's a growth period and there's a harvest um, at the end of that you can apply that to winter wheat to summer wheat to the grapes but we'll all fall into some category um even some you will forbid will fall into and, and it's nobody here but somebody's going to see this video that i'm speaking to they will fall into the category of tear and that's just the sad unfortunate tragic result is that's because uh of who they are they're stiff-necked they're refused they rejected, um, you know, and you can see that in a tear in the field. Wheat will, will move and it'll flow with the ruach. It'll bow. The tears will be standing straight up, proud, unbending, unbowing. It's rigid. It, it, it looks very similar to the wheat, guys. I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but tares look very similar because they have a seed head that goes on up. It looks very similar, but, but many times it sticks out. You can look across a field of evenly grown, um, evenly grown wheat, and you can see every tear standing up in the midst of it all around. It's amazing. You can identify who the tares are, but you don't touch them because if you do, you damage all the wheat that's around that tear. So they remain, they remain in the congregation, right? Yahuwah removes them. Now these ones are the ones who will refuse and they will, because they think they're wheat. They don't know that they're a tear. They think that they are a wheat. And so it's quite the shock to them when they finally realize, and this is the tragedy of it, 
there will come a point when they finally realize they've self-deceived. They told themselves, I'm a wheat. I'm just better than these wheats. I don't bow. <laughs> I don't bow. It's tragic, guys. But he gave us this imagery. And when you contemplate that, my, my, the, 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 the wisdom he gives you, it's very clear. Very clear. Um, we live among tares. And they're not always going to see it. They're not always going to, you know, they may seem like it. They'll, they'll, they'll be there. They'll be in the, the chat. They'll be there. They seem, they can talk it. They can quote scripture. They can talk it. They're not quite, quite there. Right. So they're, they're among us and uh, you can identify them. You can see them and who they are and you pray for them. Right. But something supernatural has to happen for that to change. Right, that is the bottom line to it. I can never change that. I cannot change it, oh, tear into wheat. I can't identify it, but I'm not supposed to touch it. Wow, that's pretty heavy. That's a word there. Amen, brother. That's four, but that's Amen, a word. Brother. Wow. Wow, guys. I think we should probably wrap. There's no more. Probably should wrap it up here. This is going to be a long right. video, but I think I'm going to upload this one um, to YouTube because uh, I, I think the Holy Spirit is, is put some words here today and some wisdom and um, some amazing codes um, that we need to consider these things. He's given us signs. He's given us indicators. He's given us words of wisdom. He's even given us confirmation in, in a few of us. Right, he'll he'll show something over here, but he'll also show so over here. And then when we come together and, and we compare notes, uh, we can see showing us, guys. This is the amazing thing uh, about the ephod and the Holy Spirit moving is he'll confirm a matter multiple places, and um, you know that's a that's a heavy thing. Um, he he he's not a father who just thrown us to the wolves. He's given us tools and the wisdom um, to come through it. Amen. Is this a special bread that you make or any bread? Kala. Kala bread. Just Google that. Kala? She's got a recipe. If you want hers, she'll put it over in water cooler. Um, okay. There are loads of, you know, they do it a different way. People put stuff in it like garlic or whatever. Um, you don't have to get all fancy unless you want to, but just basic challah bread, a good coat of butter on it. Some people don't even know how to bake bread, so that's where right. we are. So well, you don't have to make challah bread, right? Mm. <laughs> I wasn't planning. I wasn't planning on challah bread. You don't have to. I don't think you have to. <laughs> just leaven. Two loaves of leaven. Yeah, it's just two. It is two uh, loaves. You know, it is. It's kind of fun if you, especially if you involve the kids, because they can get their hands in the dough right. and. They can braid it and then see the outcome of it. And kids love to eat it. Um, uh, there are people who make it sweet. Um, they'll put like cinnamon and sugar in it and stuff. It's up to you guys. But it's honey. just honey. Well, if we get Darla's recipe, I might make a loaf of that. Yeah. Because I know my son loves it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the bottom line is that we're remembering. And uh, because we're not farming wheat, it's, it's not really about the harvest for us. It's about acknowledging um, because the whole community would, would do that. It wouldn't just be about the farmer and his harvest because the whole, the whole of the community benefited from the bread. They got their grains from there. And so they all celebrated. They all gave thanks um, for the harvest. And, they, and in many cases before machinery, they all participated. Everybody had a job. And uh, you know, that's community. And so let, let's make this Shava about community and um, just loving him and loving one another and i think it'll be a beautiful thing i think he may do something amazing on, on this day amen brother i'm with you there because and do they celebrate just the one day or is it for two days shava is one day right it is one day one day, one day. Okay. Yeah. One. please read my notes in water cooler because yeah. uh we had a little bit of revelation on that this year yeah okay hallelujah thank you yeah so that's in a couple of days. You got plenty of time to go get some 
wheat, uh, some uh, flour and whatever you need. And yeah, maybe Darla might make it and we'll record it. You want to make it in your recorded video? All right. Yeah. All right, guys, let me pray for you. And we'll see you Sunday. Hallelujah. I'll be good. We're thankful, Father, for your love and your mercy and what you're doing with us here, Father. That You haven't forgot us. You haven't thrown us out to the wolves. You haven't uh, let us succumb to pestilence. Father, your word is true. And we honor you. And we thank you for your provision and for your love and for your mercy, your favor. Father, I ask that you, you remain with the people, that you nurture them in your word, that you supernaturally bring them to a place, Father, of, of knowledge and wisdom. Uh, if they're not understanding these concepts and these, uh, these ideas, Father, that you, would, um, that you would make it more simplistic to them, that they can understand what's, what it all means. Uh, I would go with them. Keep them protected from the enemy. Um, bring them back at the appointed time. We ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay, guys, don't feel like you got to leave. I just need uh, uh, the longer they are, the longer they, they take for me to upload. And so feel free to stay in fellowship. You guys don't have to leave, but I'm, I'm going to stop the video and uh, get that process going. All right. Thank you. Okay, I'll I'll uh, take out host. I'll take host if you want to. Sure. Yeah. Throw away. I will do that. There you go. All right. Love you guys. Shalom. Shalom. We'll see you Sunday. See you Sunday. Hello.